purpose of this video is to measure part for allied error. What we're going to do is we brought in a DXF file. After we brought in the DXF file, it gave me the known location of all the parts. I'm going to choose the rerun button. The machine then drives over and it starts aligning the part. It does this by measuring the front of the circles, setting up an alignment off two of the circles and a origin off one. Then it comes back and it measures all the perimeter information to get the overall length of the part, the overall width of the part, and the angle of the two ends of the part. This all came from the DXF file. Next thing we're going to do, after we measure all the angles, we're going to come over and we're going to measure all the holes. So as soon as it finishes this last measurement of the, of the width and this last angle, You'll see that it's measuring the diameter of each one of the holes. We're doing it with three points. We could have done it with more points if you needed, but three seems to work really good. So what we're going to do is we measure, and as you'll see it measures across this part, and then later on you're going to see it stagger back and forth. The reason it does that is this is the order in which it was presented from the DXF file. So the machine follows the order of the DXF. I checked this entire part, the entire run is 5 minutes and 30 seconds from the time you start it to the time it completes your report. But if we're doing 100% of all the inspections for these holes that are shown. As soon as it finishes that run, it then picks up these holes. Now these holes are measured, on well, these holes we're doing about 100 points around each hole. Uh, we're doing this because they all fit within the field of view. As you see it going back and forth, again, this is caused by, this is how they presented from the DXF file. One advantage of the DXF file import is the fact it brings in the nominal values from your CAD model. So we don't have to type in any of the nominal values. We still entered the upper and lower spec limit, and I put them at plus or minus five thousandths. It will report if anything is out of spec as it's running, or you can pull up a log report so you can see a list of anything that failed as it's running as well.
As it completes the last of this measurement, the machine can move out of the way, and then what we can do is we can have it show a report. This report will show a diagram of the part showing the actual denominator, upper and lower spec limit, deviation from nominal, and what was out of tolerance and percentage of tolerance used. If you scroll down through this, you'll see a variety of parts, 72. So if you can see, there's a lot of data here and everything is within spec except for this one showing out of spec on the Y position on hole number 112. We can rename the holes if we need to, but you can see there's 180 features that were measured on this part in less than, less than six minutes. It took about five minutes to write the program as well. This concludes this demo.